In this video, we'll cover common alarms that occur and how to troubleshoot them. Uh, I'll take you through the basic operation of the blender, running a recipe, and then we'll navigate to some diagnostic screens on how to monitor the performance of the blender. Uh, we'll talk about how to actuate each of the uh, valves on the blender manually uh, using the control as well as how to save uh, some diagnostic inf information if you'd like uh, that you could email to the service department here at Con Air for further analysis. So on the home screen, uh, you've seen this in other videos, this is our home screen where it shows uh, a graphic of the uh, blender itself where each of the components, one, two, three, and four, are uh, set to a particular percentage uh, through the recipe button and it shows the batch hopper itself that's weighed uh, that's calculating the uh, materials amounts and there's a mixer proc switch in the back that shows right now it's covered as well as the agitator for the mixer. Uh, so let's get it started. Uh, quick review, we always tap the recipe button and you can see we have a 96 percent and a 4 percent uh, on component 1 and component 2. Uh, if you wanted to edit those you would simply just tap it and then type the new value. We'll leave it at 96 and uh, four, and it adds to 100 in this particular case. We're looking for these two natural components to add to 100, and we can just place it into automatic. So let's return to the home screen, and we can watch the performance of the blender. Uh, the arrows pop up on the screen when things are occurring. You can see it doses the minor ingredient first, it doses the major ingredient next. This is how much material is in the batch hopper and the arrow that appears at the bottom of the batch hopper indicates that the batch hopper is actually dumping out. Uh, the arrow here at the bottom pops up when the mixer is actually turning and we have yet another arrow at the bottom that indicates the valve below the mixer is opened as well as a proc switch in the back that covers and uncovers um, as, as you make batches. Um, so if you're running the blender uh, everything's running well you have some good set versus actuals here in your alarm free. Uh, if you have an issue with the material flowing or uh, uh, you su suspect it's not as accurate as it should be, uh, that would be indicated here as well. The percentages would not be hitting, the actuals would not be uh, lining up with the sets satisfactorily. In addition to that, you would also get an alarm indication that would indicate that the blender is either running out of spec uh, it would tell you the component hopper that's out of spec. It would say component one is out of spec. Uh, you may have an alarm that indicates the material flow is not repeatable uh, from batch to batch. The material is flowing irregularly from batch to batch, so you would get a material flow error. Uh, you could also get a gate valve failure alarm, which indicates that the gate is sticking open or closed. Uh, so there's any number of alarms that might occur that would, it would follow with these sets and actuals not actually lining up uh, the way you'd like them to. Uh, so in such an event you could go further into the screen to actually monitor the exact performance of the blender itself and the way you would do that is from the home screen you would tap more and then setup and then diagnostic and on this page you would tap batch hopper and then batch data. So this particular screen is showing you real time every batch that's made. Uh, in our example we had a set percentage of 96 and 4 for component 1 and 2 and then it's showing you the actuals here. Okay. Uh, up above we when we start the batch it's, it's calculating the 4 percent of the batch size that's been programmed and it's attempting to dose 18.14 grams. Um, and it dosed 14. So in this particular case, uh, since it underdosed, it would readjust the amount that the main is set to. In this case, make it a little bit lower because you undershot the amount that you wanted here. Uh, you can see again it recalculated what this one should be uh, so that these numbers turn out perfectly in the end. That's the whole goal of how the thing operates. Uh, we are uh, doing something a little odd here. We're actually running a 4% component on component 2, which is a little unusual. That's usually a rather large valve. 
so percentages like that would run much closer over in the smaller components in three and four. But for purposes of diagnostics, this is okay. Uh, and it shows us an error here so that we can kind of explain what you would expect to see. Um, so uh, for instance, if you had uh, these numbers were varying wildly, uh, the actuals, then you would you'd be able to take a look at uh, whether it was actually hitting its target. So in this particular case, the numbers are turning out well, uh, but if you had a problem, the numbers, the actual grams that were dosed would not be what they should be, and you could tell pretty quickly which one of the components is the offending component. Um, so this helps you diagnose exactly uh, uh, where to go and, and to look on the blender. Uh, before we leave this screen and start testing the blender itself, uh, the outputs and the different components within the blender, uh, let me explain these. Uh, th this particular uh, line here is called set tolerance. This is the uh, computer's uh, calculation for the minimum amount of grams that that valve can dose. So it's a very large valve. In this particular case, they're both very large valves. It can dose uh, down to about eight grams, uh, seven or eight grams as a minimum. Smaller valves would be much closer, probably a quarter gram would be their tolerance level. Uh, the time below that is the amount of time it takes, uh, 2.4 seconds to dose that material. This one takes 1.2 seconds. And then below that, the number of feeds. Uh, in this particular case, we're taking one dose to hit the, uh, uh, the 14 grams that we had there and one dose to hit the three, 338 grams shown there. Um, in normal operation, you may see more than one dose because the way the system works is it tries to approach this uh, set amount and uh, if the computer sees that you have yet to feed a value uh, that is greater than its minimum amount that it can dose, then it will dose again. If you get to within the minimum amount that it will dose, it won't dose again. Otherwise, if it did, you would overshoot. Uh, so that's what these uh, values are, are mean over here. At the very bottom, we, we calculate exactly how much time it takes to uh, dose all the materials and weigh them accurately and dump them out. So that's what the total time at the bottom is. Okay, so that's the diagnostics. Uh, how do you figure out which one may be an offending component or an offending material? You could have a material that's an issue and flowing like a flake or, or some irregular material, or you could have a mechanical problem with the system itself. So let's return to the home screen and we'll show you how to test uh, the mechanical components itself. Uh, in order to do that, uh, it, it's advised that you actually stop the blender and we'll let it finish this current batch. And then it stops itself. Uh, at this point, you may want to drain the materials out because we're going to be actuating each of these component valves. And if you do that with material in them, then of course the material is going to come out. So for test purposes, you could leave it in if you want, but you'll have to deal with the fact that you're dosing material into the batch hopper that you'll later have to discard potentially. Uh, I would suggest that you drain it completely in order to perform these manual tests. So assuming you drained everything, uh, in order to, to perform the manual tests of each of the components on the system. Uh, again, we would navigate more here and setup and more. And then we tap manual control. Okay. Now, if you go into the screen and you start opening and closing valves while it's in on auto, in auto, you will get a warning that says you have to stop the blender. That's why I warned you about it prior. We've actually stopped the blender, so we will not get that warning. But in this particular case, uh, you can see that we have easy tap buttons for all the components within the blender. Uh, you just tap them and it opens the valve. Uh, you would go and view it to be sure that it's actually opening properly and opening and closing. And you can also hear it open and close because it is a pneumatic valve. Uh, they're noisy enough where you can typically hear what they're doing. And you would test each one of them in the system just to be sure they work properly. We also have a valve at the bottom of the batch hopper. I would suggest you test that as well. Uh, the mixer itself you can turn on and you can turn it back off. And there's a valve at the bottom of the mixer which you can open and close. Okay, so these are uh, each of the components, valves in the system, and this is the screen that you would go through to test. 
If you felt like your uh, alarm beacon wasn't working, you could also test that as well, and that'll enable the output and flash the light. This one would enable the horn and sound the horn. So that concludes the basic maintenance check of the, of the blender for all the components within the system. Some typical alarms that you might see, how to go to the diagnostic screen on the batch system, then how to diagnose which component may be the offending component, and then go into manual control and check and see everything's okay. Uh, if you're unable to find the problem, there is an additional step that you can do. Uh, that is useful uh, for saving information out of the system. Uh, the system will save the last 100 batches that have been created by the blender, all the data associated with that batch, and you can email that to Conair Service Department and we'll uh, analyze it for you in, in order to help you isolate the problem, whether it's a material problem or a mechanical problem with the blender. In order to get that information, you would tap more, setup, more, and you would go into this button called File Manager. So File Manager pops up a screen that allows you to uh, choose uh, the data that you'd like to save, uh, where you'd like to save the data, so you'd select the destination. In this particular case, we have a USB thumb drive plugged into the back of the uh, Blender touchscreen. Uh, so I'll select that as the destination. Um, and then the default is Drive Explorer, which is it's just the home page for, for the uh, internal workings of the system itself. So you would tap this and you get a list of different things that you can save off. Uh, and we're looking for diagnostics. Um, you can also save the configuration off and you can keep that stored in a desk if you'd like. Uh, if you uh, suspect somebody changed the configuration parameter and you want to reload the configuration, then you would bring it back out on the USB stick and put it back in and retrieve the configuration back off. So you can actually save the configuration and retrieve it back onto the system. Uh, if you have stored recipes, you can save and retrieve those as well. Uh, but we were headed towards the save diagnostics here. So you would just select that. The screen changes to save diagnostics. Again, our destination is the USB port and it's going to put the files into a subdirectory on the USB drive called Diagnose. So in order to have that happen, you would just click this checkbox. You'd get a progress bar that would show that it's saving the data. And when the progress bar was completed, you could remove the USB thumb drive and then just email us that file. So that concludes our basic maintenance and troubleshooting. Helpful hints on how to uh, successfully troubleshoot potentially a material or a mechanical problem with your blender in addition to sending us information so we can help you diagnose it further if you can't find the problem. Mm -hmm.